Hey y'all, it's Nathan here with the Garrett Racing Team. And welcome back to our race shop. If you're new to our channel, check this race car out right here, guys. This is an open wheel modified that we race at Ace Speedway. And we're gonna do some other race tracks that we're gonna be going to. I do all kinds of stuff with maintenance, setups, day-to-day -day routine with this deal, everything that you can think of with a race car and other high-performance vehicle stuff. So be sure to stay tuned. We've got a lot of content we're putting out. And if you're returning to the race shop, thank y'all guys. You really are making the difference and helping us out here. We're really making some good progress, putting a lot of good stuff out there. And I think a lot of people are getting a lot of good information and enjoyment out of this stuff that we're putting on. So tonight, if you can see, we're kind of a little bit different angle with this thing. I've got a light going on over here with our whiteboard. I want to go over more or less a little bit of a classroom session, I guess you would say, on the actual weight distribution on these race cars. And this pertains not only to the circle track stuff, but any type of racing, race car, high performance, anything that deals with weight distribution on your cars, how to get the correct distribution that you want, basically front weight versus rear weight, left side weight versus right side weight, and how to go about doing all that. Because when I first started dealing with race cars, I uh, started out go-kart racing, but when I first started dealing with race cars with actual suspensions and that type of thing, it, uh, I don't want to say it's simple. It is simple once you put your mind around it and think about it, but going from a, from a go-kart that doesn't have a suspension to something that does, there's so many things that you can change on these things that you kind of sometimes get caught up in that process and, and, and can get lost in it. So I want to kind of clear over some stuff on that end to make it easier for you if you're doing uh, some stuff on your car or thinking about it or just want to learn and see how this thing goes. Again, this applies not only to circle track stuff, not only to the modifieds. I mean, this is for NASCAR. This could be for Formula One. This could be for your sports car, road racing, and heck, even drag racing. I know those guys are really big on certain ballast on theirs to make sure that they get the hookup that they need at the rear tires to take off at the start finish line. So guys, that's what we're gonna do for tonight. Really appreciate you. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. That notification bell will let you know when we put new videos out each week. Also, be sure to check our Facebook page out, Garrett Racing Team. That's everything across the board from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, it don't matter. Garrett Racing Team, you can find everything we do and what we're about there. And uh, guys, I really do appreciate it. Come along, we're gonna take this ride tonight, get in on this race car and talk about all about this weight. All right, y'all, thank you. All right, y'all, let's get in here and get to it and do a real good deep dive on this weight distribution topic for these cars. Not only race cars, but any car in general. So what I've did is kind of use my whiteboard here and I hope you can Read what I've got wrote down. I know the green color is a little bit light, but I want to step us through this to kind of give you an idea of what my thought process is as I go through working on this car or any car for that matter and preparing it for a race um, and just making one better in general for handling characteristics. Uh, so more or less, we'll entitle it the weight distribution uh, session or class, if you want to say that. Um, and what I would do is if you've got a car and you're working on one, the first place to start is Look at removing any weight to lighten the car up. If there's any added components, anything that you can live without, uh, sometimes there are certain types of bolts that you can get that are still as strong as what's on the car but are lighter, uh, different types of components. Sometimes you can buy lighter wheels that are uh, still just as strong. Body panels is a big one, uh, running fiberglass instead of steel. Um, just anything that you can think of to help lighten up that race car uh, to get the performance that you want out of it. And, and basically, not, it's not just lightening it up. It's basically taking the weight out of what I call dead spots. So places on the car that doesn't really help you to have the weight there, may not hurt you any, but doesn't necessarily help you either. Personally, and what most people like, is if you remove that weight from those spots, then you have the choice to put that weight where you want to put it. And that's where you can make speed up. That's where you can help with your handling. And it so just makes a world of difference. So the next thing I would do is after you get your car where you want it and you think you've stripped everything off of it and you've got it where, you know, it's still safe to drive. Everything is, is good on that end. But from a lightness standpoint, you've took everything off. And, and I would also, if there's already some ballast on your car, and what I mean by ballast is like lead blocks. So ballast is like lead blocks that you bolt to the chassis to get weight up. I would go ahead and take all that off. Let's start with a fresh, clean slate with this thing. I don't want any extra added weight. The only thing we want on the car is what's 
there that we could actually need to drive it. So um, the next step would be prepare the car for race conditions. And basically I want everything on the car besides any added weight, including the ballast. So, and what I mean by that is, is I want the race wheels and tires on there. Uh, no, no, basically, uh, I guess you call them shop wheels or shop tires of our cars. We actually run like a, uh, a loader wheel because it makes it easier getting out of the trailer. Take those off. Make sure you've got the right, you know, true, legit race wheels and tires on there. Make sure your air pressures are where they need to be uh, all the way around. Like if you were going to go out and do a qualifying run or, or a, a main feature run, um, make sure you've you know, full of gas. Fuel cell needs to be completely full, like you're getting ready to start a feature. Uh, you want to make sure your transmission and, and um, engine ha are full of oil. Uh, your brake reservoir for your master cylinder and your clutch reservoir, make sure they're all full of fluids. Everything is where they need to be and topped off as if you were going out on the track besides the added weight. So where that's going to get you is, is more or less what you would need to pull out on the track, but you're actually going to be underweight. So for us, we run like 2,650 pounds for our total weight, but this, let's just say for instance, after we've cut everything out, we're 2,450 pounds. So now I've got 200 pounds that was on the car maybe at some point that I've taken off now, but I have the choice to put back where I want it. This is going to play a major role in our left side percentages that we desperately need since we're doing left-hand turns all the time. Um, and it also helps us get our front to rear percentages like, like we want. So one key thing too, I wanted to make a point of when you're doing your scaling and getting your car ready to go, basically as if it was gonna go out on the track. I, since I do a lot of my work myself, I'm not able to actually sit in the car. And you think about it, a man sitting inside of a race car, a 200 pound man, that's a lot of weight there. So you still wanna have something in there to help basically dictate your weight. So what I do is, is I got a neat, neat, nifty little, I call it the dummy, the Nathan dummy. It's a, a concrete block with a piece of PVC tubing. And what I do is, is I actually stick my, put that in the race seat. So this actually, this sits in the race seat. This would be simulating, I guess, the top part of my body and neck. I'd put my helmet in there to more or less give me the weight of my helmet. I've got some weight lifting weights that I stick around there in the seat with this. And then I also have some additional lead blocks that I, I've kind of got as spares that I get to the right weight of my body weight sitting in the seat. So all that's simulated so that I actually can work on this thing without actually being in the car, if that makes sense. I mean, it kind of it kind of allows me, if I'm out here by myself, I can do the work that I need to, but I also have the, like I said, race conditions in there besides my added weight. So the next step would be once the car is removed of all the weight, unnecessary weight. You got to prepare for race conditions besides the added ballast you need to make up the weight difference that you have or, or your goal that you're trying to hit is you would need to put the car on some scales. So uh, a lot of places make these digital readout scales that basically you have a, a pad that goes under each wheel, left front, right front, left rear, right rear, and you lower the car down on there and it'll give you your total weight and it'll tell you, like I said, I'm shooting for 2650. Um, so that'll tell me where I'm at overall and what I need to hit. So more or less, just to kind of give you some quick background, I drew this little diagram up. Imagine this is like each corner of the car, um, more or less in a square. It makes a good, easy visual. So I highly recommend drawing, drawing something similar to this when you're working on your cars and doing setups. If you don't have a set of skills that necessarily gives you that automatically in your percentages too, it's an easy way to calculate it. All you got to do is add up all four corners and that'll give you your total weight. So left front plus right front plus left rear plus right rear. All four corners, that'll give you your total. All right, to get your, let's say, left side percentage, that's what we want since we're doing left hand turns. I would really like to know that. The way you get your left side percentage is you add up left front plus left rear, you get that total and then you divide that by the overall total of the car. So let's say our total weight should be 2650. And when you add up left front plus left rear, that might be, let's say, 1,500 pounds. You do 1,500 divided by 2650, and that'll give you your percentage. The same can be said for the right side. If that's what you're looking to do, you just add those two up, divide, divide by the total. Um, and then for your front percentage, 
All you do is you do your left front plus your right front. Again, let's say that's about 1,500 pounds. Then you divide that by the total weight of all four, which is like 2,650 for all cars. Um, and again, the inverse of that for your, for your rear. So not too hard to do. The main thing is knowing what your total weight is, um, and then you can start backing out your percentages from there. So let's say we were in the hole, like I said, 200 pounds. Let's say we're 2,450 pounds, but we've got to be 2,650. What I can do then is I, then I can get my blocks of lead, my ballast. Um, most time they're in chunks of 20, 30, 40 pounds. Uh, you can get bigger pieces, smaller pieces. Then we can start placing these things different places on the car to see how that affects our total weight um, and how our dis distribution is going to line up. So if you can imagine, if you had a block of lead and theoretically we placed it right dead center here in the, car, in the middle of the car, your total weight would go up, right? But none of these numbers really should change because you're dead smack in the middle. Now, if we all set it to the left-hand side, what would happen? We would increase our left-hand side percentage. So the whole thing with this is just kind of trial and error. That's how I do it, placing it in the car in different spots. You know, gradually step our weight up and, and see where we're at in terms of our, of our percentages to our total weight. So as we get closer to 2,650 pounds, uh, we should start being able to dial, dial in our percentage where, exactly where we want it. One key thing with this, all right, this is a big, big, big one. and something I had to learn just by doing, and I, some people may think it's common sense. Some people may think it's something that it's easy to understand. Uh, it, it is easy to understand, but until you do it and, and do it a lot, this is something that I had to learn just by doing. So a lot of people, and including me, when I first started racing cars, I got away from go-karts, I started racing with cars, I got all these new adjustments. You got coilover shocks, and what I mean by coilovers, they've got coil springs, and then they've got like a collar that you can spin to go up and down to compress or decompress the spring. So I had made the mistake in the past when I first started, now understanding this deal, of thinking that whatever my car weight is, I can adjust the percentage front to back or left to right of my car by adjusting those coilovers. That is wrong, completely wrong. Coilovers do not affect weight distribution. Now, there's a whole nother thing called weight transfer that some people call cross. That's what I personally call it from my go-kart days or wedge. You hear a lot of NASCAR guys talk about that. That's a whole nother ball game and that is all affected by coilovers and how they're adjusted and, sc and screwed in and out and in different geometries as well. When you do adjust those coilovers, let's say you went down on your right front spring, you screwed that thing down. When you screw down on a spring like that, you are increasing the weight on that right front wheel, but you're also taking away weight from different parts of the car just because of the way the car is kind of getting jacked up on these different corners. So it may look like you're increasing your right front percentage but you're taking away right rear weight. And I'm, I'm, it, it, it's the way it is. You, it's more or less like a give and take. If, if you're going to put in here, you're going to have to give me some somewhere else. So it ends up being that you, you never affect that, that left hand, the right hand, the front to back weight distribution. Basically, you're, you're affecting your, your, your weight transfer diagonally across the car. And when you're looking at the actual total weight of the car in terms of, of its total weight distribution, it does not affect that. So that's what a lot of guys, and that's when I was first learning how to set cars up and do that type of thing, I got tripped up on. Cause I'd be like, man, I, I, put, a, I put two rounds in the left rear. Shoot, I got more weight back there. I'm, I'm increasing that left rear. So I should be getting more left side percentage, right? It shouldn't make sense. Nah, what you actually do, have done is, is you've taken away some weight somewhere else and you're still the same percentage now your cross and stuff's messed up so uh you can chase your hind end back and forth because i've done it i've went all over this car sitting here about mad at the world trying to figure out why in the world can i can i do that you can't do that you cannot cannot adjust coilovers to get your weight distribution you have to do that by physically placing blocks of lead where you want it 
One other good point that I want to go over. Let's say uh, you got a car that, especially like a, a really stock type car, like a, some of these more stock classes, they're not actually a tube chassis that you can re remove a whole lot of weight from. Let's say you're already close to your minimum weight. Well, you still may want to increase your percentages, right? So you still may want to increase your left side weight. So what you'll end up having to do is, instead of being, let's say, uh, let's say I'm already at 2650, but I'm not at the percentages that I want, I still have to add weight to this thing, and I'll actually be over my minimum weight. So I'll be giving up weight, so I might be 2,700 pounds, you know, instead of 2,650, or I might be 2,750. I might be 100 pounds over. I don't, don't want to be, but if that's where I, I want my percentages, I have to add that in there. And again, it all comes to actual physical locations of your lead ballast and where you put them. That is the only thing that affects your weight distribution. That you've get, you can't do it any other way. I mean, trust me, I've, I've, I've studied a bunch on this and I've done a bunch of these things. And if I'm wrong, somebody tell me I'm wrong in the comments. I want to read about it and find out some stuff. Um, but again, and I ain't talking about no trick setups where people can actually slide weights in cars or putting uh, lead shot in frame rails and stuff. I'm talking about typical like bolt lead down legal stuff. So um, that's more or less... More or less it for this video. I hope I haven't been too confusing for you. I hope you can kind of get a little more um, information from this, and I hope it helps you if you're if you're working on your own car, trying to get it to uh, get it together and try to make them, try to make weight, cut weight, you know, putting weight in different places. Again, if you can cut out as much as you can, uh, that gives you options to place it where you want to. And um, and if it's nothing but putting a dead weight splat in the center of the car. Well, heck, that's all right, too, because it's not hurting you. And if anything, you can get weight that was up high. Now we can take that weight that was up high in the car, even if it was center line, down low. Then we have a lower center of gravity. And that's a whole other ball game right there, fellas and ladies. <laughs> so uh, if anything, we want to take that weight, manipulate it to our preference, we can get that sucker down, and, and even like I said, if it's, even if it's just dead center of the car where it's not affecting any left to right, front to back, we can at least get it down low as far as we can, down at the lowest point of the chassis, and uh, that, that really, really helps with race cars, guys. So uh, just before we get out of here, I want to show you one quick thing. Uh, we've got, I've got basically, let me pull the hood off of this car here, and I can show you a little bit. I don't want to give you a little too much information because I've got probably some competitors that do watch this type of stuff. But look right here, guys. You see this white block right here? That's lead. See this frame rail? That's lead. So as you can see, it's on the left hand, left front side of this car. I've got lead in other parts of the chassis. Uh, but again, that's a little bit of some secret stuff. I won't say secret, but I had to figure out some things on here that took me time and I don't want to give all my stuff away, but that, that point there, you see that a lot on most cars and most people and what they do. Uh, but again, guys, this is going to more or less wrap it up. If you've made it this far, thank y'all. Again, I hope it's been informative. Hope you've got some enjoyment out of it. Thank you for coming along with us on this ride at the Garrett Racing Team. Thank y'all.